All right, it is Friday, November 3rd, 6.55 almost in the morning. Uh, I just got started and drew these channels and realized I didn't push the record button. Um, so it looks like we just had a range in the overnight news hit spiked up and have this large two-tier channel. And um, right when I was starting, there was a second entry long here, but I had a possible down channel here. Um, so I didn't take this and I was still kind of drawing everything. So, um, luckily I didn't take this since I wasn't recording. And, uh, if you look down here, you'll see that, um, all of my accounts are back to active. The three PA accounts I blew up are back and the two evaluations, uh, the loss was erased on all of those, uh, I guess. Um, I guess my loss was during the time when people were having problems with their rhythmic. And so my accounts got reset. Um, like most people that I think had a loss yesterday. So I wasn't expecting that. I didn't ask for it, but, um, I'll take it. I appreciate that. And apex is really the best for doing that. Cause most prop firms will not do that. I think, uh, most of the time, like top step doesn't, doesn't do that. They, I think they fixed it once that I know of for everybody, like system wide, but apex has done it multiple times now. Um, so apex really is the best. They really do, in my opinion, take care of their customers. Um, all right, there's a first entry and a hidden second entry here. I'm not going to take that. The news is in five minutes. Um, High impact news. So I'm not going to take anything until after that hits. And um, we got one leg up and a second measured move up up here. And I'll hit pause until I see something. Just watching here. Got a first entry long, second entry long below the EMA. Don't like how these bars are stacked up here. Order order Video. submitted. Failure. Or order cancelled. Uh, I don't know. I get a little sketched out when I see this here like this. I was going to maybe enter, but I canceled. There's the measured move for it to still reach, but it's a strong up day. It's probably a good failure. Yeah, I could have got in this, but uh, I feel like I've lost on these when they look like this for some reason. These two matching bodies right here in front of it. I'll leave it alone. There might be a PB coming up down here. Right now it's only gone six ticks. It looks like it's going to have worked for Eight the here it goes. I keep adjusting it though, it's like, that's where the channel would have been. So we already have a break, break a new low. Still one tick shy of my eight ticks. 
All right, there it goes. So that would have been a winner. It's been a while since I've been trading pets, so I took one yesterday, but I don't know. I guess it made sense to take it, but I don't know. Playing it safe. There might be a PB here, though. Order submitted. Make a white in this. PB if there's a close down here. For a close down here, it gives a PB. We're at the measured move, though. Seems like we have a break in break in the order canceled. From the way I originally drew it. Order submitted. If there is a PB, I think I should take it. Order canceled. And there's a PB, but it's not a bearish enough bar. And because I already do seem to have a break in the low, um, I'm not going to take it. Yeah, I suppose I could look for something like this. I don't know that that really makes much sense. I'm going to leave this here just to see. All right, I'm going to pause here and see if something sets up. All right. Trying to decide whether I'm leaving this channel this way. There was a little bit of a push down after this bar. We were at the measured move already. I mean, this is the thing with pats that's always frustrating. You can have a channel down like this, or you already have a break in your low, or if you go to here, it seems like it's respecting it. We'll see here. If this comes outside of this channel, then I'm going to move it back to the original way. Yeah, it just seems like go with the first way I have it. It seems like it makes the most sense. So we already have a break of the down channel, the new low. It's been an up day. We already have the retest of the high here. Just wonder if there's. Could maybe say something like that, but then there's an overshoot that way. So yeah, I'm not really sure what's where we're at now. It's 
far as channels go. Um, pretty sideways and stacked right here. So I'm just going to let it play out a little bit and see what happens. Actually, I'm seeing something else here. Maybe I can say it's a spike and channel like this. Not really too sure about that. If I take this one off, then it looks like spike and channel. It's broken now too. Stick with my original it's from here. Channel down. Break two legs to a new low. Like the thing with paths is if you uh aren't 100% positive about your channels, then you can't know when to take setups. That's when it gets confusing. It's like when you don't feel like you know what's really happening, then you can't take a trade. Um, now, before I was just taking a trade whenever I saw a setup according to my rules on the NLTS, but if I'm trying to keep track of the channels and um, the context of them, then now I can't take any trade I see on the NLTS strategy unless I understand what the channels are doing. So still trying to sort out what the best way is um, of handling that since uh, the strategy was working so good for me not knowing the context of all these channels. And then since last week, I can't say that anymore. I'll pause here and wait for something that's clear. All right, I'm just trying out to see if maybe we got a channel here like this. Um, it's always hard to tell. It's like the beginning of a channel, but it had this uh, one going up. It had a break and new high. So, you know, I'm not seeing anything to the upside anymore. So. It makes sense to try to see if there's something going to the downside at this point. And I'll have to uh, just wait for a setup. And it's possible there could be an OJ with a close down here. Order submitted. Just in case. Which also could potentially be a second entry short, first entry, second entry. And that'd be the best if it lines up like that, because then I could take the second entry short and use that as the stop, a smaller stop than my strategy would usually give. So I wouldn't take this as a second entry short since it's a close right above the EMA. But I will wait and see if we get an OJ down here and potentially um, I'd be able to enter that.
Doesn't qualify as an OJ. Okay. Order canceled. Let's just see if we have something like this happening. Maybe a second entry long failure from below the EMA. Order submitted. Very flat EMA. Okay, so that's off the board. kind of strange looking failures if this happens but I don't like taking a failure like this it doesn't doesn't look right to me I'm just, I'm not going to do anything here. I'll pause. Cancel this order. Order canceled. Pause here. All right, so it looks like the failure worked. thing is you'd have to take it right here. Yeah, look at that. I don't know, it's just kind of weird looking to me. So, let's see if we get any other setups. All right, looks like it's respecting this channel. Got to bounce here at the bottom. So let's see what happens up here if we get up there. Also just thinking um, if we measure this as a leg. We have a second leg that we haven't quite reached yet. So um, that's a possibility as a target, although it already looks like one leg down, two legs down. So we'll see. Right, just watching here to see if um, this down channel holds here. I mean, price has reacted on the bottom like it's legit, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, still no setups on my strategy. Um, we had that failure back here that I skipped for Pats. Because we had a failure here that I skipped for Pats too. And it looks like we are getting this reaction here. Let's see if this holds. Don't need that. Break new high in one bar. So if this holds, um, I might be looking for a kind of triple test, second entry short. One, two, and then something over here, maybe. So it seems like it's holding. Just mark the range to make sure I have what the lows are in case this does give a setup. I want to make sure that I have eight ticks to this line.
You can get an order, order there submitted. There's a potential OJ on my other chart as well here. Right now, no setup on paths. This closes down here. Gotta make sure I have enough room and see if it qualifies as another J. No, no other J. not on that bar. If it closes here, then it looks like there's not enough room for eight ticks. No, it's not an OJ anyway. Order canceled. So this down channel looks pretty confirmed with this touch here. Still had this measured move. I didn't quite get to. I'm not going to take anything down this low. So I'll pause it here. All right, so I'm just watching this. Order submitted. This would be the potential triple test. You get triple tests in first entry short, second entry short. Oh, oh, flat EMA. Right into the EMA. I don't know. Didn't quite touch up here. It's only a touch if you go by the first pivot. All right, so let's see. Looks like you're just breaking out of here. Okay. Order canceled. Not exactly sure what we're doing here. We feel breakout, but this is also like a reset count here. So higher high. Fill breakout. I'm just going to wait. So now we get this lower high after triple test and second entry short from here, but these bars are stacked up and uh, right into the EMA. I would expect it to work because it's a break of this and to expect a new low. It's only six ticks, but I feel like these are the kinds of trades I would always lose on when I was trading paths. Looks like it's going to work. And like the time I don't take it is when it works, and the time when I do take it is when it doesn't work. There might be an OJ. Order here. submitted. Um, not really a lot of room. 
Order submitted. This is Nojay. Expecting any low. Hopefully. Me a little nervous here on this support. Expecting any low. Just gonna lock this in just in case. Just because it's right at the Stop support. Filled. Okay. Just made me nervous seeing the support here and it starting to bounce. It's probably good. Um, yeah. It's probably good, but because I had the support here and I'm looking at both things, um, I just don't want to take a chance of it bouncing up, but it looks like it'll work. There it goes, yeah. So unfortunate, just playing it safe, not being stupid, clearly support right here. Um, so just got two ticks, unfortunately. But this was an OJ bar. So that's what I'm gonna have to figure out. When I'm looking at both pots and this, you know, it's like, I know I'm expecting a new low of this right here, but it's really hard to stay in this trade when you see it starting to bounce right there, knowing that there's support of the range. So I, I think as time goes on, I'll get better at, um, you know, hopefully recognizing when I can stick with it or when I need to get out. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Uh, I was trying to wait. And really, I probably should have waited until the bar was closer to closing, but it just so easily could have just bounced right out of here like it's doing now, but done it right right here. The, the only thing that really it had going for it was, like I said, it needed to get a new low of this because of this down channel. Um, so, uh, as I move forward doing both of these strategies at the same time, you know, doing the channels and keeping that in mind 
you know, maybe over time I'll be able to better gauge that. The better trade was really the Pats trade, which was the lower high after the triple test. It's also a second entry short from here, first entry, second entry. Um, but these make me nervous going into the EMA. It's funny, the OJM is more um, confident in, except it was close to the support. All right, so I updated my stats here. The OJ is now six and two. Definitely could have got my full A tick scalp. Um, this went basically perfectly to the measured move down as expecting. So, you know, there were reasons to stay in it, but I think I did, um, you know, kind of what I had to do. I'm glad I took two ticks at least instead of one. Um, you know, every little bit helps this number three account because, um, just need to get further away from the trailing drawdown. So now we're down here, you know, about just under $300 by $7. So $293 away from the trailing need to add on to that. Oh, need to add on to that as much as possible. Um, so, all right, Just wait for another good setup. So I figure we uh, played out the downside, got this uptrend, we already retested the high of this, and now I'm looking to see if this will hold here. Um, right now you have a first entry long, this could be a second entry long, but now these bars are kind of stacked. So um, I'm not sure this is something I would want to take, but maybe if we got a second entry long and then a higher low, which would also be a failed second entry short. So let's see what happens here. Um, doesn't look like it's in a place for anything on my, uh, my strategy uh, for setup. So second entry long did just trigger. It's under the EMA. EMA's flat. Um, right under where the previous resistance was. Although it's kind of broken above and below it a couple times now. So I'm not really looking at that anymore. But not a great signal bar anyway. Um, wouldn't it go short because I have no reason to still be thinking short. So to me, this is just kind of a in the waiting game area of the chart um, based on what I'm seeing on Max uh, Pat's channels that I have drawn. So it seems like this is holding. So I'll be back if something sets up. Actually looking, this might be an OJ to the upside. Order submitted. With a close here. Just in case. No, no OJ. Order canceled. Um, let's see, this entry would be 67.75. So if anyone took a second entry off this signal bar, they would have got a four tick scalp. But I don't know. I would never take that trade. And everything just looks sketchy. So I'm waiting. And right, so I always find things like this interesting is like, is this a break? Is it not a break? So then I go here. Essentially the same thing without a break. But again, the subjectivity of the path strategy is something that makes me a little crazy. Um, I wish there was like 
an indicator that just drew the channels exactly the way Mac draws it. <laughs> like if he was more, um, I don't know what the word is, but if he was more like the kind of person that would like go and create a indicator that draws his channels exactly how he would want them to be drawn. <laughs> um, so that you know it's the way he would do it, but it's not. So anyway, I'm still watching on this side. I'm still watching on the other side um, for my my NLTS strategy and uh, uh, not seeing anything anywhere. So pause it here and keep waiting for another setup. Actually, I am thinking um, first entry short, second entry short failure up here, but it's just so stacked. I don't know. These never make me feel comfortable to like go long above this. It's not like I have another up channel that I'm trying to um, get a new high for. There is the big measured move from earlier this morning, the second leg that hasn't been reached yet. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I find it really difficult to like take this first entry, second entry short big bars, um, 14 tick bar, not that I should be afraid of that considering how big my stops are on, um, my other strategy, but, uh, it's just, we got three bars kind of stacking here. Just makes it feel kind of sketchy. And I'm sure it'll work. Looks like it's gonna work. I'll just pause and wait. I was just thinking to myself, the other thing I could do, I could have given some indication to take a, the failure, just do the measured leg. You have a target here. So that, that makes this failure look a lot better to me. I hadn't thought to do that yet. And it looks like it's on its way to working. It's already worked for four ticks. Um, and the thing is, I go for eight ticks. So there's a, a resistance here in the way of getting it to eight ticks. So um, when I was trading pats all the time and I'd switch to eight ticks uh, scalps, um, I'd look for there to always be room to the next kind of pivot matching bodies type, this kind of situation where there could be some sort of resistance, but I'm quite sure this is going to still work for eight ticks just because you have this measured leg, you're in this confirmed channel. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work and you still have a, the bigger measured leg up that you're expecting to hit. That still makes sense. So, but I'm not taking this. We'll see what happens next. Now there's a higher low after the failed second entry short, but I never feel comfortable taking these either. Um, although there's room to the eight ticks. Well, look, it's going to go right away. I gotta get better at considering these kinds of trades right at the EMA close above. Look at that. I don't know why I never trust these. It's a weak spot in my um, Pats game is the higher low. All right, still watching. All right, so I took a break for a little bit. Um, I was here, right here, this was a LO and um, I just chose to not even consider it because we had already reached the measured move of this first leg up. Um, and I got to figure out how I'm going to approach that because if I've already reached a measured move up, but it's happening higher and we're still within a trend channel that's intact. And I still have the measured move from the first big leg up in the morning to reach. You know, I think 
I have to give it more consideration than I did to take it. Um, so I, I think now that I'm drawing these channels and everything, it's just something I've got to figure out how I'm going to gauge when I'm willing to take an LO or when I'm not willing to take an LO because I've gotten into trouble when they're past a measured move sometimes. Um, having seen how good this one worked, it's like, I feel like if it's an intact channel, maybe it's okay, even if it's past a measured move, as long as there's a bigger target up there still. But I don't know. I think it's just going to take time for me to um, continue to do this. Drawing the channels, drawing the measured moves is still very new with my NLTS strategy. So I'm just going to have to continue to observe and see when they work and when they don't work. Um, but I should mark it. All right, so I marked it um, again just because it hit this measured move and it, it, it did try to back up a little bit. You know, I didn't know if it was just like a breakout that was going to fail of some kind. You know, I mean, if I you could draw a little mini range there. So it's like once it went out, I didn't, I wasn't sure what to think. I, I kind of felt like, oh, well, it can break out and break, you know, and then be a failed breakout and come back into this and come to the lower end. So, you know, things to just kind of be aware of and, and hopefully add to the arsenal when you can take it, when you can't take it. Um, everything else looked good about it. So there was really kind of no reason not to take it other than just the measured move. All right, I'll pause and keep waiting. It's still early, 9.15, plenty of time. All right, so I hate when this happens, but I just did a reset and just noticed that my bars changed. So I went back and looked back here and now the bars are different <laughs> for my OJ. So um, if it looked like this at the time, I would not have taken it. So that's interesting. I mean, look, I have to like move this higher even here um, but the bars are completely different this wouldn't have been an OJ at all uh, so I feel fortunate that I got out <laughs> when I did um, and even you know this was like a lower high here that was you know worthy of taking and here it's not um, you know I'm looking at this this was a um, higher low at the time that was worthy of taking and now it's not first entry, the second entry still maybe but not this and what about this LO let me see the LO is actually still good the bars are different but the LO would have still been good here still um, qualifies Look at this, we're going to reach that measured move up that I've had all morning. The second leg up from, from the first one that I drew here. It's finally going to get a touch. It looks like very close. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. My only trade of the day. It's now not, not a valid trade after... Uh, uh, refreshing the historical data, I should say. And um, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I don't think I've been trying to get into the habit of uh, throwing out the cache files um, every morning. And I, I think I didn't do that today. So I really have to try to remember to do that before I turn on Ninja every day. Because um, that, that is concerning. If I'm, uh, if my bars are somehow not, not being accurate as the day goes on. So I'll just try to keep refreshing, um, every 30 minutes or so, but, um, hopefully these are right now. I'm also looking at this. I mean, it seems like it's playing off the midline. I wonder though, if I could, if I were to 
change it to this. That looks pretty good too. That midline looks pretty good. So either way, I don't see any other setups I would have taken. First engine long, second entry long. I wouldn't have taken that. First entry long, second. I mean, just nothing I would have taken. Just grinding its way up to this measured move, maybe beyond, who knows. Um, you know, I mean, you can even, now that's reaching that, you can even argue, and this is hard to imagine, but from the low of the day, all the way to here and then from here. Hard to imagine it's doing that today, but I would say if this thing keeps going up, that's like the secondary uh, target, which is above 44.15. So that would really be something, almost 44.20. So just something to keep in mind as this thing continues. We do have, um, this looks pretty solid and confirmed. So even when we get a break, there'll be a, a retest, you would think, um, or it won't get a break and it'll just keep going, who knows. Um, Whatever it does, I really don't care as long as um, I feel like I'm understanding the context when a setup occurs. And uh, I'm happy to take a setup, whether it's PATS or my N NLTS. I'll take either one. So I'll pause here just as it's getting to that first target and come back if something sets up. I just decided to put back on my original channel, wider channel that I had. Um, it seems to still fit. And um, I was just thinking if, if we do get a break of this blue one, then maybe it'll bounce at the green one. Uh, this looks like a second entry long here, but we've already hit the measured move. By the way, to the tick, I mean to the exact tick is incredible. Um, can make an argument that it should be there. So this is right bouncing off the key entry point of the blue channel, but because we already hit the measured move, uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe we get a break of the blue and come down here. Um, but this is first entry, second entry. Uh, I'm just, I'm not taking a, a trade here. Um, also, because to me, this this channel doesn't fit quite as nice. I feel like this is like a trap. Like, this channel has played no part in any of this up here. It didn't even trigger. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is maybe it goes through here since it didn't trigger, maybe it'll form a second entry down here off of this one. And maybe I'll be able to take that potentially. I'm not seeing any setups for my other strategy right now. So that looks like already a break to me. Probably not convincing because I can move it and make it not be a break, but Let's see how this happens. Um, I'll pause it here and if something sets up, I'll come back. I just widened the blue channel a little bit back to where I had it before. The other thing is, is there something like this? Maybe you could say break a new low already, second entry long, right under the EMA. Uh, I have a really hard time taking a trade when it's right 
under the EMA like that. Just the wick coming into it. Um, these are the trades I feel like when I was trading pats. Uh, I would get a lot of losses on these sorts of setups. First entry long, second entry long. It's right at the EMA. The EMA is flat um, on a channel that, while it's confirmed, um, just the blue channel just doesn't seem like it fits quite right. And so it feels like a trap. Uh, I wish if this is a trap, I wish it lined up with a setup on my other chart, but it doesn't. So, um, I'm not going to take a short. And the second entry long maybe still works. Maybe there's going to be a higher low. Uh, but I definitely don't trust the second entry here. Now we have a failure. I'd love to be able to take it, but how do you take it when it's right at a key entry point? Yeah, it could just be a double trap. Trap trap the people taking the failure, give you a higher low, and keep going. Strong up day overall. I'm almost feeling like if this does become a higher low, close above, maybe I should consider it. Just drop the shorts. It's kind of looking like that, right? It's looking like the failure is going to work. Just can't do anything here. Oh, now it looks like the failure is not going to work. Order submitted. Higher low after a second entry long. Man, it's just so stacked. Again, it didn't close above. Sketch. Seems like if it breaks above, it'll be a good higher low after a second entry long at a key entry point. Six tick signal bar. considering it. Don't want to take it. Order submitted. Take a shot at it.
order filled. All right, just taking a little bit. I don't know if it's good for the ATIX. Oh, I only got three ticks. I thought that was going to be four ticks. I mean, I probably should have stuck with it. I'm a little bit um, uneasy. <laughs> I should have stuck with it. I'm a little bit uneasy taking these because this, this is not a typical trade that I would take. Um, higher low after second entry long. Yeah, it's a trap the trapper, but key entry point. Just one of those that I felt like maybe it's only going to be good for four, um, a four tick scalp. I didn't really have a good plan for this. Um, cause it's not, like I said, it's not a setup I would typically take. So, um, only plus three ticks. Yeah, see, this is kind of what I was afraid of. Um, I don't know if it's going to now go the other way or not. It would have been good for, um, let's see, 84 and a quarter. It went seven ticks. <laughs> um, so I definitely could have done better than three. I should have, I really wanted to get four, but, uh, over time, I'll build back up my confidence with the Pats trades, but we'll count that as a win. Um, and I'll, I'll take the, the little bit we can get right now. So I'm going to pause here and we'll see if something else comes up. And actually, I'm going to make this... Um, I don't think it's really gold for me. This is more of a white trade. Um, and you can see how now we have this break. Not convincing break yet, but it seems like a break. And it still hasn't gone up to the eight ticks. So even just this little bit of a pullback, I feel like I did the right things considering the trade is really, um, you know, Mac rolled four tick scalp is what he would say to go for. I'm going for eight. To, to me, this is one of those going for eight. You, sometimes you lose these by going for more ticks. Um, I wanted to lock in four. I miscalculated. All right. So the eight ticks would have worked if I stuck with it. And, um, Yeah, I'm not sure if this is a break or not, honestly. It's not very convincing, but it looks like a possible break. Uh, I updated my stats, so I'm now 2-0 and with Pat's uh, strategy on YouTube. And 39-10 overall, 80%. Uh, unfortunately, uh, both my trades today, only able to get two ticks on one, three ticks on the other. But um, small wins are wins nonetheless. Um, and uh, hopefully as I gain more confidence, I'll be able to, um, you know, put myself in the right spots to get my full scalps. Um, but after the last, uh, you know, week I had last week, uh, I'll take this. You know, I, I got lucky that my losses got removed or my one loss got removed this week from yesterday thanks to Apex and um, uh, so you know the, these accounts are still alive and uh, um, not a big hit on my evals that I had from yesterday so just playing a little safe gonna build some confidence it's the end of the week want to go into the week feeling better about things because it was a little discouraging uh, how things have been going for me and um, so, yeah, see if we get anything else today, but I'm happy with my two small wins so far today. 
All right, so finally have a legitimate break, um, although this could have been a break here, so we could already have a break in new high. So I'm not necessarily looking for a retest of the high here at this point. Um, it's just not clear. So I'm going to put the retest out of my mind. Um, I do still think that this channel is legit, the green one. Uh, it feels like it's the midline's been playing a role. And um, top has another touch here. And then another touch here. So this green channel looks legit still. Um, so I'm going to think about that. But otherwise, um, I think this blue channel did what it was supposed to do. I, I would have got the eight ticks eventually on this trade. Um, although I would have been real nervous here when it went seven and backed up and ticked below here even um, before it went on to make it. But uh, all right, so, you know, two and oh for today, very small wins, um, building confidence, plenty of time still. Let's see what happens. I'm actually going to take a break here, 10 10. Uh, go feed my dogs and take them out, and I'll be back. All right, so just getting back from taking care of my dogs, it's 10 30 now. Um, I just drew in this channel. It looks like we had a break of the green, break a new low, and now I'm expecting a retest of the green channel. Um, don't see any setups. I'm just thinking I can draw this maybe. Uh, there's nothing really yet perfect to be able to draw yet, but um doesn't look like I've missed any setups while I was gone. And uh, market's moving pretty slow and has been for some time. Um, as you can see, this would have worked for the eight ticks if I stayed in it. And not a whole lot to say other than that. So let's uh, see what happens next. All right, not sure what's happening, but I just noticed my Apex accounts are all offline. Uh, must have lost the rhythmic connection. And um, I was just working on kind of making this a little cleaner. Uh, Pause and see what's going on with my Rhythmic accounts. This channel clearly isn't good. Maybe there's something like this. I keep my eye on. But uh, let me figure out what's going on with the connection. All right, so it looks like I've got my connection back. Not sure what happened there. I was just um, cleaning up the... Uh, the look of where the stats are, making that box a little bit wider, made my chart a little bit smaller to do that. Um, and then I just looked and it was all gone. So looks like everything's here now. Um, doesn't look like I've missed any setups. So, uh, let's see, 1045, still a lot of time in the day. <clears throat> I'll pause here and see what we get. In fact, since this did turn back down, I'll just move this over here and I'll put this here. So that's kind of a next target, I think. I don't think there's a channel. I mean, maybe you can argue that that's a channel and now it's going for retest. I don't love it, but I'll keep it here for now see what happens and I just lost the connection again I don't know if apex is or rhythmic is having problems um, right now with other people but lost it again so um, let's see if it comes back all right so it just seems like it keeps intermittently losing the connection but I keep able to uh, disconnect and reconnect and it comes back so Makes me a little nervous if I get into a trade anytime soon. Um, 
but at least I'm recording. So if I have any issues, I can always send them the recording and say, hey, more problems again today. Thanks for resetting me yesterday, but need it again. Hopefully not. Hopefully nothing like that happens. Um, just waiting for a setup. All right, so looks like we have a break of this channel now. Yesterday, I had a channel very similar to this, but, you know, very similar situation. We had a, a uptrend that was still expecting a retest of the high. I had a downtrend like this. There was a wider one that looked like this. I mean, this looks confirmed. There's um, touch here, lower, touch here, lower. And I took this channel off and it ended up where I got my loss yesterday. Um, I thought it was safe to go for a new high and then price ended up retesting the lows again for apparently for a channel just like this. So this is where it becomes really subjective with max strategy. He tends to just draw the tighter stuff. Um, he might only draw even just this tight one and have a break new low and not have this at all. But in my experience, it seems like when you draw these and if they're legitimate, they still will get a retest before, um, well, might be before, might be after. You just don't know, but you don't have confluence between if this is a valid down channel and if this is a valid up channel. You know, you have the market uh, price action telling you two different things to expect a new high and expect a new low all at the same time. So these are areas where um, it's like better to just not take anything unless something so obviously clear sets up. But I think a lot of traps tend to happen in these areas where you can have multiple kinds of um, situations. And then not only that, but I'm seeing it also very much looks like it could be somewhat of a range here to be aware of equal highs, double top. And I found this bottom here. There's some support here that seems to have carried across perfectly to here. So um, just things to be aware of when trading paths. You know, it's like he only shows certain channels, but you can always find more channels. And then you got to decide what you think about um, how to play them. So part of the, this is the kind of thing that was part of the reason why I wanted to stop trading paths because it's just the subjective nature of what is valid and what is not valid to then give you the contextual reasons why you take a trade or not. Um, so that's part of the frustration I have with it. Um, but I'm going to uh, just be patient and try not to get trapped in anything. Okay, so this range did not hold, if you can call it a range, um, and we are nearly testing the highs already. Um, so that's interesting. And you know, I almost wonder if, if this backs down up here, if we get the new high and it backs down, then maybe there's potentially a, a larger range that we might be able to say is in play. So I'm just going to draw this to you just as a possibility. And we'll, we'll see what happens here. All right, so it looks like here, it's going to attempt to make a retest of what I perceive to be a channel to the low side. Now, this up one, I mean, maybe it's an overshoot, you know? <laughs> so again, more subjectivity, you know, are you not expecting a retest of that or are you? Still expecting a retest of my green channel, I believe. Um, but meanwhile, it went all the way up here without a setup, and now it's coming all the way back down without a setup. And I believe it wants to test this low right here. So 
just waiting. See what else it does. All right, so a whole lot of I don't know what's going on now. Uh, it definitely feels very range-like. The EMA is very flat. My indicator for my uh, secret strategy and LTS is also just showing very sideways, uh, which uh, typically gives the least amount of good signals and even gives false signals uh, in these sorts of back and forth situations. So um, really not gonna be quick to take anything. Um, I'm doing my best to just draw what I think are potential channels. Um, it's hard to say, you know, is this an overshoot here? Is this an overshoot here? Is this even a channel? It tried to go for a low, it wasn't able to get there. Um, so it's just, you know, this is where it just is super confusing for me to think about uh, max paths. But um, it also, I think, can keep me out of trades. I was never good at range trading his system because I find that extremely subjective, triple tests and whatnot. Um, they work until they don't work. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. How high a probability setup are they? And in his reviews, it's like all after the fact. So, you know, um, who knows um, which ones and why he's really considering in real time versus not. Uh, it doesn't really come across in his reviews how you can uh, manage to um, be confident in those setups. But in the meantime, we're just back and forth in the middle of an apparent range. I'm just going to hang out and see if something comes up. 11 20 so have another hour all right so another thing i'm watching is this wider channel um but i know for a fact mac doesn't usually draw wider channels at this time of day with only an hour left of his trading day um very very rare to see a wide channel like this and especially inside of what appears to be a range so um, i'm drawing it just um to kind of keep it in mind, uh, but I try not to give it too much weight. I think the range is the bigger thing to um, keep track of, and I'm still expecting just a retest of the high, and you know, not much more. Um, I do have a bigger measured move all the way up here, but it's hard to believe that with an hour and a half left on Friday, it's going to get there. But who knows? You never know. All right. So we finally got the new high off the broken green channel, which I was expecting. We never did get a low off this. I'm going to take this off. I think this is probably not even correct either. I'd say that it's really this, right? That that's the kind of stuff you don't know until price action plays out. I uh, don't see any trades I would have taken otherwise. And now that we have this, um, if this closes bullish, this is potentially an LO, but I'm not going to take it based on what I'm seeing on this chart. Um, and maybe if it doesn't finish bullish, it doesn't come into play anyway, which looks like that's what's going to happen. So this could be a legit range. This could be a failed breakout. And this could be a lower high to come back in. First entry short, second entry short, lower high. Doesn't trigger. It's going higher. No LO there. No trade of any kind set up. So just waiting. That's all my thoughts for now. It's 1145. Give it another half hour, 40 minutes or so. Okay. I thought I was already recording. Uh, it's just almost 1210. Um, I have this larger channel. We broke out of this range. We've made the new high of the green channel. This was an LO bar here. Um, when I thought I was recording, I was talking about how if this went two ticks above, I would have been looking for an LO typically if before I was drawing these channels. Now that I'm drawing these channels, um, I wasn't even looking for it here because it looked like a overshoot of the channel and I already had an, a breakout of the range. Most breakouts fail. So 
um, given all these things, um, I wasn't even considering an LO for the good or bad. And it, it didn't even trigger. It only went one tick. So, um, I need two ticks to be able to enter anyways. So it's not a trade I would have entered despite not having any channels if I was still not drawing them. Um, but I haven't seen any trades in all of this. Um, just not a lot of price action, very slow. This trade was at just before 10 o'clock. So this is all we've had in over two hours. Um, so I'm still hanging for another 10 or 15 minutes and then uh, I'll do a wrap up. So um, I'll just pause here in case something sets up. All right, so this is kind of interesting. Um, got up here, sold off. Looks like there's a break in the low in one bar. Looks like it bounced right off the trend channel line. And um, still don't see any setup, but maybe, maybe something will happen here. All right, so I'm just watching this. I'm, I'm getting ready to call it a day, but there might potentially be an OJ if it closes up here to the long side. So I'm going to get Order ready just submitted. in case. This channel seems to be in play. Um, if this doesn't set up in the next bar or two, then I will just uh, call it a day. If we do happen to get um, an OJ, because this would be a first entry long, a second entry long. Well, it doesn't look like we're going that direction now. You know, bad signal bar, so I can't take a Pat's entry here. But if there's a continuation of a second entry where we get an OJ, um, I could consider that. Of course... I don't know if I need to consider this, if I extend the range. Broke out, failed, came back in. So kind of a couple of things going on here. Market's super slow. I'm ready to call it a day and call it a week. Let's see what happens here. Doesn't seem like it's looking for um, a long. So I'm going to cancel this. Order canceled. It's still holding though. Thing is now, now that we've closed down here, even if it comes back up, I'm not sure that would be an OJ anymore. I'll pause and uh, give it a couple more minutes. All right. So this channel broke. And it looks like we're in a down channel now. This looks confirmed to me. Um, so just more of no confluence. Uh, failed second entry long, not at the EMA, at the key entry point. Um, just a whole lot of uh, no trades, no setups. Uh, it's 12.30. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. Uh, thankful for my small green day. It's been a long, tough two weeks. Uh, 
and just trying to get back onto um, feeling confident and, and you know where I used to be a couple weeks ago. Um, definitely, you know, not feeling confident, which is why both of my trades today uh, I didn't get full size scalps, but at least it's like I got one. Uh, it's like I got one scalp between the two trades, so still a good day. And um, uh, yeah, thanks to Apex for resetting my accounts because of the technical issues yesterday. It's not the reason why I lost, so they didn't have to do that. And uh, thankful for that. If anyone wants uh, to buy some Apex evaluations, it's 90% off till November 7th. Uh, you can use this code or any other code you might have and uh, make sure to get them before the 90% uh, ends. And yeah, I'll uh, stop now and do the wrap-up video. Uh, for anyone that has reached the end of this, um, you know, I live record my, my trading sessions every day. It seems, I, I kind of like it because the recording, you know, I traded since uh, just before seven. So, you know, four and a half hours, but this recording is only an hour and 22 minutes. And you see every time I'm considering something or thinking about something or, or looking at something or taking a trade. So it's kind of nice to, keep the the length of the live recording relatively low an hour and 20 minutes in this case um but if i get comments that people want to see me do this uh with a live stream i'm open to trying that i've never done it before uh so if anyone has any comments about that leave it in the comment section and uh please uh give me a like subscribe if you're interested in this kind of content i believe i'm the only one that's showing uh, all the stats, uh, all the stats overall for YouTube, all the stats for each setup I take broken down between the two strategies that I'm now trading and as well as showing all my account information, all the P&Ls, all the balances, win or lose every day. Um, I, I haven't seen anyone else doing it quite like this. So uh, if you appreciate that, then uh, subscribe, like uh and check out my review video uh that i'm gonna record right now in the other playlist have a good weekend